what do you do if you've got a lot of parts to do, but not a lot of space to do it in? You can literally use a pallet jack to move these around the shop. You don't need a transformer. You can do pretty much whatever you can do in a cam software in this Prototrack RMX controller. What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machining Tool back here again for Practical Machinists. And today we are gonna be talking about the newish addition to my shop. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so as promised today, we are going to be talking about the Track VMC2, which is the most recent machine we have put in our shop. This little machine, you've probably seen it in the background of some of my most recent videos, is a really cool three axis, very, very small footprint machine. I call these a foam booth machine because they're about the size of a foam booth if you're old enough to remember what those are. Before we go over the machine and all its features, we're gonna go over how it got in here because this was a very unique experience for me. Um, I'm used to moving in fairly large machines, so this was outside the norm. The one thing that was extremely cool about bringing this machine into me was that we didn't need to hire any machinery movers or riggers. And this is huge. If you have ever brought a machine into your shop or you've worked at a shop where you've brought in a big machine, rigging and machinery, machinery movers, not only does it take them a lot of time, you know, even the best riggers out there and the best machinery movers out there, they can take a lot of time to move them in because these machines are huge. They need to bring in skates, you know, their little kind of wheels they put underneath the, uh, underneath the pads where the machine sits on the floor. They also need those giant forklifts to be able to move stuff around. And you know, they have all their other tips and tricks they use to do it. The other half of that is that machinery movers are very, very expensive. Um, for some of the machines I've bought, you're talking five to 10% on top of the machining costs. So if the machine costs X, tack another five to 10% on there just to get to the machine to your door and set up where you want it. This thing, not so much. This fits on a skid that, you know, like a normal, you know, 48 by 48 skid or whatever a normal size skid is. A skid about that size plus a little bit, this fits on there. And it's actually so light, so you can chip in the back of a, you know, a, a regular transport truck. You can also take it off with a forklift. So me and my guys, literally, we have a very normal Heister forklift. We don't have one of these high end, you know, made for moving a ton of stuff forklifts. We picked it up off the truck with no problem. We brought it inside with no problem. Now this thing actually shipped out very, very quickly. I'm pretty sure they stocked VMC2 in California. It got here so quick that we actually weren't ready to put it where we wanted to put it. This is actually not the final resting place of this machine. This was just, we needed a place to put it. This was as good as any, so we put it in here. We had to get the electricals run, we still had to run the air. So we let it sit, you know, in a corner of the shop for about a week while we finished that up. And when we wanted to move it into the correct location, we used that same forklift to take it off the skid. Then you can literally use a pallet jack to move these around the shop. That's kind of what's interesting to me about the VMC2 was that you can pick it up, move it wherever you want. Leveling these things is super, super simple. You can do it yourself, but we've moved it a couple times and it really hasn't come out of level. I mean, we have a good concrete floor, but that's huge. You know, if I wanna move one of my bigger machines, I might get away with a forklift, but I might do damage. Really, you need to hire machinery movers to do it. So that's big. The other really cool thing about this is that you don't need a transformer. So any of you people out there who've put, you know, uh, a regular, regular, a larger VMC or lathe in your shop, you know, most of the time, even if you have three phase service or 220, you need to have a transformer. So a lot of my machines have a big transformer that costs about 1500 bucks. I have to get an electrician in, wire it in, and then the machine gets moved in. They need to come and hook up the machine. This also means I can't move that machine without moving the transformer, 
unhooking the machine, an electrician does that, I don't do that. These ones, yeah, I don't know if you can see here, but it actually plugs into a welding outlet. So 220 outlet. We just had our electrician come in and run a drop so we can plug it straight in there. What's cool about that is we actually got them to go and run welding plugs like this around the shop. There's a few of them. So what we can do is any place we need this machine, we unplug it, unhook the air, and we just have quick, quick disconnects like you have for an airline for this machine. We use a pallet jack, move it to where we want it, plug it back in. So it means wherever this is gonna be really good, it can go there you know, within 15 minutes. Very, very easy. Where this machine excels when we were at um, track in California at their facility, they had in the space of a normal VMC, they had probably two or even three of these in a row. You can see there's nothing on the sides, you know, besides the controller, there's nothing on the side. So you can stack two or three of these right next to each other and basically create your own work cells. So that's our aim for this. It's going to be going to the other side of this room here. We just have a big drill press in the way, but this is going to be a cell for the lathe. So we do have a live tooling lathe on the other side in another unit there. My lathe right here is a straight turning lathe, which means I can't do cross holes, doesn't have live tooling, it's, it's a straight turning lathe. This is gonna be to handle all the cross holes, all the flats, all the off center holes, all the secondary operations that we wanna do for lathe, plus just other little jobs we have. One thing I hate is I have machines that have 60 by 30 tables, and we set it up to do parts this big to put flats on them. It just feels like a waste. So this thing, very, very small travels, very quick travels. It can do them very, very quickly. So that's kind of our, our goal for this. Uh, it is gonna be moving, but you know, it's gonna be interesting. So what we're gonna do, let's take a quick peek in here. Let's go for a quick overview of this machine. So as you can see, everything here is very straight up and down. It's very compact. Right at the bottom, we have our coolant. So the coolant is actually a it's kind of like a tray, but the tank is integrated to the actual body of the machine. Below that right here is my chip tray. My chip tray is integrated right in here. Again, you're not going to be doing huge production in this machine. You're going to have to empty that out when you need to. Very, very easy, very light. The other thing that's cool is this door actually opens straight up and down. And you can see it locks right at the top. This is nice because then you're not fighting the door on either side when you're trying to get into it. Um, it makes it very, very easy. We have a 30, tim uh, 30 taper spindle. Where's one of my holders here? I have a bunch of them, there they are. So you can see a little smaller than our typical 40 taper, but that's okay. We've already taken some pretty heavy cuts with this. Um, I really kind of thought this wouldn't be able to handle some of the heavier cuts. Had no issues with it so far. You can see it does come with a, well, at least we got the subplate. Underneath here, there is a T-slot table. So you can pop off the subplate. You can use your T-slots. You know, the next job we're gonna be running, we're actually gonna be putting a chuck on the table to do some round work. The vise that is on the table here, it is actually a custom. Usually when you have a vise, you have the driver on the outside, which sticks out a bit further. This is a custom vise that comes with it that actually has that driver on the handle. So what that does is let this vise get very, very close to the door without breaking it. it. Does come with this nice stop too. You can see we have an adjustable work stop here. Comes with a bunch of these with different dowels. Very, very handy because then you can just stick it wherever you want it. You can see we're running a, a little side job right now doing some uh, Lexan in there. What's also really cool is if you look in here, you go, there's no tool changer. Yes, there is a tool changer. There is a tool changer right in the back there, but that actually pops out from the back. It works just like your usual, you know, VMC where you put your tools in the spindle, it goes, puts them away, keeps track of them. So we're gonna be running this thing pretty much every day. Uh, we just got it set up and finalized. You know, we had, uh, we were trying to get used to this. We're gonna be running it every day, but the one thing I'm excited to try out a little bit more in detail is the ProtoTrack RMX controller. So if you haven't used a track machine before, this controller is kind of what sets these machines 
really apart. Um, we're gonna go into this in another video because I don't wanna make this be a half hour video so you don't see everything. But the RMX controller, this will take standard G-code. So right now, a lot of our programs are in G-code. You know, we program in a CAM software, it needs to go into the machine, it goes by G-code. No problem, this thing will run G-code. We've had no issue with that so far. But what's really cool with the Prototrack system is these are the ones that are like the tool room pros. So you can program bolt circles right in here. You can program milling operations in here. You can program tapping. You can do pretty much whatever you can do in a CAM software in this Prototrack RMX controller. They also have those adaptive tricoidal tool paths, you know, like the full depth adaptive tool paths that you'd expect from a high-end CAM system. They have those right in here. I've played around with them a little bit so far. They work really well. I gotta get a little more comfortable with them before I show you to make sure I'm showing you the right thing. But I've been learning very, very quickly. I've only been really trying it for about two days. I haven't had any issue before. I have never run a proto track before. So it was brand new to me. It seems to be super easy to get into. My neighbor here, he has a 1995 proto track, you know, one of the more Nemo styles. Uh, pretty much the same style of controller. He came over here and he was showing me how to do stuff on it. And he's in his 60s. You know, the ability once you learn how to run these things, it just transfers from machine to machine. But like I said, you don't necessarily have to use it if you don't want to, it will take G-code. So what we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna keep running this thing. Uh, right now it's just running this little Lexan job. I'm hoping to get some more interesting jobs coming up to go into it. Um, a lot of the hydromat tooling we're doing is, you know, it's A2, it's hard milling, it's, uh, you know, cross holes, it's holes on angles. So we're gonna work on a little bit of fixturing for this thing, we're gonna run some parts. And next time we're gonna show you how this thing runs and how to program in the Prototrack RMX system. In any case, guys, I'd like to know, would you guys use a machine like this in your shop? Small footprint, would you have use for it? Love to know in the comments below. And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.